Welcome, my friends, back with another episode of Bigger Warriors 2 and the 1% Club. Today is September 16th, 2022. Hope you guys are on your plan, your battle plan. plan. Keep moving, my friends. Keep moving. We're up to uh, 830, what is it, 33 days and 74 days of monk mode. So we're getting back up there with the monk mode. Keep going. Keep going. Keep fighting, my friends. Keep fighting. So today I'm going to talk about just several different comments and ideas and kind of shout outs to a bunch of people. And I also kind of want to kind of hit a couple topics that people have been asking me about. So, uh, Young Minds, thank you for your great comment. Willem, thank you. Jackie Chan, great job. Thank you, my friend. George, Kirby as always. Mountain Wolf, thank you, Mountain Wolf. And James, he asked me how did I find out about uh, semen retention. I'm going to talk about that a little bit. King Dev David, King David from South Korea, thank you. I want to all shout out to King David and Kirby. They're doing their own channels on uh, semen retention, so look for that. Um, if I get the links, I'll send it to you guys, but uh, make sure you look for that. King David is, is a, a great viewer, and so is Kirby, so go ahead and uh, Kirby Shrine, so go ahead and, and look, at, look for those guys. And then uh, Young Minds was talking about loss of energy, so we'll talk about that a little bit as well. I kind of combine these get a little bit. And then patience, uh, I think Mountain Wolf was talking about having a little more patience, and I think that's a good point too. And then uh, the last thing I want to talk about is loss of weight. So uh, it kind of fits together. So I think we're gonna we're gonna term this one um, losing weight with semen retention because I think we cover them all these uh, this way. So all right, so it's enough shout outs. Let us begin. First of all, go ahead and subscribe, comment, like. You know, this is I, as you can tell, this is all stuff that I kind of talk about is what you guys are sending to me and shouting out and things like that. But let's talk about this idea in the general sense of, of weight loss, patience, and energy, because they all kind of come together in a certain way. So when we look at patience and we look at what we're trying to do here, remember, semen retention, I, you know, it, it's, a, it's a key buzzword for a lot of people now, but what really talking about here is the whole idea of self-control, self-mastery, getting those demons out of yourself and taking charge of your own situation, your own life. That's the key. So James, when you asked me a good question, and when I started uh, knowing about semen retention, uh, it really started more with a different concept that I've talked about in a couple of videos, and I mention every so often, in the book by a guy named Kendler um, called The Fountain of Youth. And I think it was 1997, 1998, somewhere around there. Uh, we had moved to a new house, and I went to a Goodwill, and I found this book on Fountain of Youth. My goal and my idea has always been to try to live a long time. I really mastered a lot of these people who could live over 100, 120 years. You know, I think it's 120 years or something like that as the record. And I've always wanted to do that, but in a healthy way. And so I was always striving for things. But when I was in high school and college, I played college football and I played high school football and I got so banged up and I had eventually just, I had, I had to stop. I can't, I couldn't keep doing, I couldn't get out of bed, couldn't walk around. And so as the years went on and I went into my thirties, I struggled with a lot of, um, you know, arthritis issues, all kinds of eczema for a lot of reasons that I had a lot of physical issues and I didn't really think I was going to make it to 50 let alone try to get my goals of over 100 and things like that. So uh, I kind of kept looking for things in the back of my mind that I thought were going to help me in doing all this. And one of the things that I saw was this book called Fountain of Youth. And um, I read it, you know, and I didn't really think too much of it at the point. But I said, okay, I have nothing to lose by trying a lot of this. I was, th I think it was in a, my mid-30s or something like that. See, so I 61, so probably about 36, 35. And the doctors had said that you have a lot of hypertension, a lot of issues going on, and so you got to do something. And so I kind of went into this meditation type of thing. Kind of these exercises uh, went back. The story is that there is a person who was talking about the fountain of youth, and he looked pretty old. But he was telling this person, I'm going to find the fountain of youth. Well, he went to different parts of the Far East. He went to, to try to figure out where this was at. And as is Ponens, Point, uh, Ponens, <laughs> Ponens uh tried to do, try to figure out where the fountain of youth is. 
And the thing was is that we didn't realize that we have it inside of us. And that was the whole key to the whole thing, that we actually have all that inside of us. And the thing is, the important thing is to recognize is that a lot of your self-control, a lot of you comes from your own body and the way you are. And so they, this person, Kendler, found this out. He went over to the, um, he went to the Far East. He did find a lot of the uh, ancient monks and the monks who were there. And he talked to, in Tibet and he talked to them and he found out there's a bunch of exercises they did which helped them, but the sixth exercise, which was the most important, I have in my eye here, kind of going crazy a little bit this morning here, uh, the sixth one was really the one that really deals with semen retention. Now, at the time, I didn't really believe it. I did the first five, and then the, then a the person, who, uh, Kendler Wright in the book said, well, number six, you'd only do when you really feel like you want to give this stuff up. And what he was talking about is celibacy. And he was talking about not having sex and not letting go of your energy and giving an exercise to do that. And so the thing was is that what, you're, what he was talking about was trying to be able to deal with that energy level that you would have and getting rid of that. And so the thing is, is as you look at this, and my, my eyes, guys, sorry about that. Um, as you look at this whole thing, he was talking more about trying to figure out how can I, how can I use this energy and transmute it. And so the exercise he was doing, he was able to transmute it. And so I didn't know a lot about this. And so back to James' question, I didn't know a lot about this type of thing. And so I used it, the exercises, since 1998. And I was pretty happy with it. I mean, I've actually been able to get rid of a lot of the stuff that I had and allowed me to continue to, you know, be strong and continue to do the things that I want to do since 1998. And I've had a few kids and you know, I've been married for 30, almost 30 years. And so, you know, it's all worked out well now. I'm into my I'm 61, going to 62. And all those type of things are things that, you know, are helping me. And I certainly think it kind of helps me to, uh, to do these exercises. But the sixth one, I could not master. I went through a lot of years of dealing with, um, you know, going back and forth and releasing. And I had believed the matrix that I talk about all the time is doctors would say, you know, um, you know, you need you need to release energy four or five days times a day. It's great for you. It's great for your health. Great for your prostate. Uh, all, all these type of things. It's good for that kind of stuff. But the thing is, is that I knew in the back of my mind something was wrong here. I was basically losing energy. I was more depressed, more anxious. It was difficult with all the gains I had made to keep it going. And so, probably around uh, let's see, when I was fifty-eight, something like that. Uh, two years, right before the pandemic, or right probably part of, part of the pandemic, I had said, okay, I'm going to be home for a while. Let's see if we can try to solve this. I have nothing to lose by doing retention, semen retention. And so that number six exercise that Kendler was talking about was dealing with the whole idea of using and transmuting energy. And he goes through a breathing exercise to do that. And so you, I would really recommend getting that book, The Fountain of Youth. This has been around. It's only about $9, $10, I think, something like that on Amazon. A lot of places you can go and get it. Um, but it's a very famous book when it comes to this. And, and I think there's a lot more truth in it than people believe. It deals with chakras. It deals with the whole idea of energy and being able to kind of use your energy to uh, you know really kind of support everything else that you're doing. So... I used that, and then I started saying to myself, okay, I've got to try number six. I think I'm at the point in my life that I, I have to do something because I was kind of destroying myself. I was not making amends. And, you know, I had goals, obviously, to make money and to and make more money and, and try to be successful in different things. And I wanted a six-pack of abs as well. And so I tried to do those type of things. I never got close to it. But I didn't realize what the problem was, really my whole stomach and core and everything was weak and soft, even though the exercises I was doing helped, it wasn't good enough because I wasn't doing a lot of the retention number six. And now that I started doing that, and I, like I said, I made 123 days in this, this streak, um, now I feel tremendous. And I'm actually getting a two pack of abs, or close to three, and we're getting closer and closer all the time. And in fact, we go to, to, to weight issue now, 
as we talk about, and, and I know said I have, was up to 270 at one point during all this stretch, and now I've been pretty good maintaining. I'm, I'm at 229 now, and I contribute a lot of this, and even in the book says contribute a lot of this to the exercises and semen retention because a lot of it is really kind of balancing your weight out. And so you can lose a lot of weight when it comes to semen retention and, and using the exercise and transmuting the energy. Why is that? Well, let's kind of examine that for a second too. I, and this goes back to energy. Obviously, when you lose weight, you're focusing on your body using and kind of breaking down all that fat that you have, that we all have, and trying to trans. Transmit that, transmute that into energy. So what you're doing, in my opinion, now this is my opinion, I don't have any factual information on this, but my opinion is that as you lose weight, as you have seen retention, as you're keeping your nutrients in yourself, as you keep all those vitamins and nutrients that you have when you have seen retention, that allows you to build more muscle. And that allows you then to then burn those calories off of the fat and now you're, you're, you're burning muscle and the muscle becomes stronger. So on top of that then, if you're able to have the discipline to do semen retention, then you're gonna decide, okay, let me then transfer this and move on and actually do something like, you know, with weight intermittent, intermittent fasting, doing some fasting that I do. Then you, then you go back to working out more and go maybe do some weight lifting and speed, especially as you get older, like in my case of 61, I do a lot of weight training and things like that to keep the muscles. A lot of you got young guys, you should be shredded if you do a lot of this stuff by the time within a, within a year. I've seen people get shredded like crazy and not just because of supplements and things like that, but it's because of the seam retention. This is one of the things that I think is just kind of a little bit of, a little bit hilarious to me we see a lot of these guys who are taking supplements and all this kind of, you know, uh, stuff on TV and athletes and things like that. Well, this is, but they do that, but then they go ahead and release their energy. And so it's almost like, you know, they're, they're not getting the most benefit they can. They're become, they're, they're weakening themselves out. This is why they've always said in years past that when you're having a big athletic event, don't have any sex, don't have any kind of intercourse you know, before the event. Because what you're trying to do is try to keep all your energy. And in fact, if you keep your energy and you're transmuting it, you should be able to have that working on your system so that you're continually losing weight. And even if you had those bad days where you're eating over eat, and I've had that many times myself, you're able then to rebound and continue back. Once again, losing weight, exercising, seam retention, this is guys is all a lifestyle. You know, so you, even if you break through, so, so any of this kind of stuff, you know, whether you release, whether or not you eat, you know, sugar like I do at times, you know, I, I fall back and I, I miss that sugar. Sugar is something I'm still working on. I know I, someone mentioned that. I'm not sure which, which uh, one of our viewers mentioned that. I think I'm going to talk about sugar a little bit and trying to look at fasting and things like that. Again, I think I'll probably do another one on that. But the idea is that you want to keep a balance, right? You want to shock. I always, someone told me shock in the system over the years. So one time you're eating healthy, the next time you're shocking it with something, you have a cheat day, whatever it might be, and then all of a sudden you get back and uh, you know your, your body doesn't know what's happening. The same thing with ret retention, but retention is something where you, if you're able to transmute that, that, that stuff, you're not just sitting and playing video games and you're not, jet, you're, not, um, you're not releasing, but you're also not doing anything with that, that, that you know, new strength you have. And so it's just sitting there doing nothing and eventually gets frustrated and this is why sometimes people don't have the greatest, you know, um, effects on uh, from uh, seam retention because they're not doing something to transmit that energy. You gotta be in action. You gotta be a man in action, a, a warrior, and work through, you know, using that energy in ways you can do that. And this is why this is how you become superhuman because you continue to work through all of that and you continue to use that energy and build yourself. And at the same time, when you're building yourself. You're also breaking down all that fat, and now it's becoming more muscle. And that's kind of what you want to do. And muscle is still around. Even my age of 61, I see people at 80, 90 years old still building muscle. It's not the same as a lot of you young guys at 20, 25, 30 years old. But 
it is still strong and you still can have strength. I don't believe in the notion that just because you're getting older, you have to become weak and frail. That I think is, is, is old time talk and blue matrix stuff. What you're talking about is being a strong individual and being somebody who has a, a muscle no matter how old you are. And I think you can continue doing that and keep those muscles as strong as possible. And I think certainly the biggest thing with that is to keep your retention. Now, my case is even more crucial than a lot of you young guys, but again, you know, one of the reasons I'm doing this is to kind of give you guys some, some things to think about as you're doing this when you're younger and making you know, strong choices on when I'm going to release my energy and when I'm not, because uh, I had a lot of problems with that you know, when I was younger and uh, you know it really didn't serve any kind of purpose. Now, if you're having kids, that's that's a whole different deal. But the thing is, is that not everybody is going to go through that, and you have to kind of think to yourself, when am I going to use this energy when I'm not going to use this energy? But again, as we talk about this, the loss of energy, all of these are kind of related, and I think a lot of this too is going back to the idea of having patience, which is I think that Mountain Wolf talked about that men, we have to have patience. And he said that directly, and so I'll quote him on that. Thank you, Mountain Wolf. The idea is we have to have patience. You have to kind of work as this is a lifestyle change. And as you see it as a lifestyle change, it's not something that you're gonna be able to you know, overcome you know, all at one time, just like smoking, just like drinking, like any kind of other addiction you might have. You're not gonna overcome this in one day. But slowly but surely, you're gonna get better with this, and you're gonna be able to kind of deal with all of this and and work through it each time. So as you look at this, the key is gonna be having patience, as Mountain Wolf's talking about, but also be able to look and say, okay, I'm, I'm somebody who's going to uh, get myself in shape. I'm gonna start with re semen retention. I'm gonna start with these exercises. I'm gonna to start to go ahead and, and, and build muscle and do things. And as a, as a result of that, it's going to end up losing weight as well. And so as you as you look at all these type of things, it's crucial to understand that these are all connected together. And that's why I kind of bring it all together in a, in a thing. So you can lose weight. You can gain energy, not lose it. But you can also, you know, with your patience, be able to get on a, a lifetime type of plan. No matter if you're 15, 25, 35, doesn't really matter how old you are you can always go back and look at um, changing your lifestyle. And that's kind of the key thing we're talking about here. When we talk about excellence, we're talking about changing lifestyle, making yourself, put yourself in a different position, trying to look at life a lot differently and trying to do this. Now, it's all under God's plan and on God's purpose. And so a lot of us who are listening to this and you know, there's a reason why you're here. There's a reason why you're listening to me. There's a reason why I'm doing this. There's a reason why, you know, it took me 47 years to do this. I think that when you're talking about all these type of things, we're all here to help each other. And so at my, my role is to go ahead and kind of just provide my experiences, information, and hopes that one person, great if it's more, but at least one person takes it and says, you know, maybe, maybe, Maybe that guy's on to something, right? Maybe a bigger warrior has some, some good thoughts there. Maybe there's something that I could use here to make my life better. And then you give that to someone else at some point, right? It's not a matter of, you know, who is winning or losing, even though we're in a, a, comp a, a competition-based society. It's really a matter of providing information that can help you and getting away from all these false illusions that seem to permeate through our society because people have wicked means and evil ones using people to just to, to to exploit you know human beings and, and trying to get them to eat that apple you know of Satan and looking at life a lot differently and so that's the whole thing and in fact you know as I'm thinking about this is very interesting I think I do want an Adam and Eve again because the apple really woke up Adam and Eve well this is what happens in our society people think they're woke up and basically, they think they're they're gonna you know all these problems going on. And in fact, Satan is leading them down the wrong path because of it. But that may be another video for another time. All right. Well, once again, thank you guys for all your comments, James Mountain Wolf. Thank you all, you guys, George, Jackie Jan. I think I forget somebody here, but uh, King David. 
Thank you guys, Young Minds, Willem, uh, Kirby, George. Thank you guys for all the comments. You guys have a wonderful day today. Uh, I'll try to do one this weekend if I can. I like this Adam and Eve one. Maybe I'll go back to this a little bit too and talk about that one a little bit. But um, continue to battle on. Continue to don't give up and continue to keep going until the last day, which in fact we never know when that last day is. But you want to make sure that you're focusing on being the best you can become by that point in time and keep battling on. God bless you guys each and every day and take care, my friends. Have a great weekend.